In this video, we're going to be working with some of the basic rules for derivatives. So first, let's go through the different rules that we have. First, we have the power rule, and this says that if f of x is just a power of x, then the derivative is equal to, so you bring the power down in front and make it the coefficient, so that's where we get this n, x to the n minus 1. So for example, if we have f of x is x to the fifth, then f prime of x, we're going to bring this exponent down in front, we're going to have 5x to the 1 less, so that's going to be 4. Then we have the constant multiplier rule that says if we have a constant in front of our function, the constant just gets carried along for the ride. We kind of ignore it, but keep it around, and take the derivative of the x part. So what I mean by that is if I have something like f of x equals 7x to the fifth, so this 7 is like our c over here. So what we do is we just keep that 7, carry it along, and take the derivative of the x to the fifth. So that is 5x to the fourth, so we end up with 35x to the fourth. Next, we have the sum or difference rule. And this tells us that if we are have sum or difference of functions, we just take the derivative of them individually. So for example, if I have x to the fifth minus x cubed, let's make this 7x to the fifth minus x cubed, then my derivative, we're just going to take the derivative of this term, so we already found the derivative of 7x to the fifth, it was 35x to the fourth, and then subtract off the derivative of x cubed, and that is 3x squared. The last rule that we have is called the constant rule, and this tells us that if we have a function that's just a constant, so for instance, f of x equals 5, then the derivative is just 0. So f prime of x is going to be 0. And if you remember, if f of x equals 5, this is just a horizontal line through um, 0, 5. And so the derivative of this is the slope of this line, and um, we're going to have the slope of that line is just 0 because it's a horizontal line. So now let's look at some examples. We're just going to find the derivative of the next few functions. So we have f of x is x to the seventh minus 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. So the first thing I always ask myself is, do I need to rewrite this so that it looks like powers of x, and I don't have x's in the denominator or any roots to deal with? And in this case, I don't have any work to do to rewrite it. So the next thing I do is go ahead and take the derivative. I want to give the derivative the correct name. So if we're using function notation f of x, then the name is going to be f prime of x. And then we're just going to go through term by term and find the derivative. So um, I bring this exponent down in front, 7x to the 7 minus 1. Here, this 4 is just going to go along for the ride. Take the derivative of the x squared part, that gives us 2x to the 2 minus 1. The derivative of 2x is just 2. The derivative of minus 1 is 0. So I end up with 7x to the 6th minus 8x plus 2. So let's look at another one. I have 1 over x cubed minus x to the 1.4 plus the square root of 2. So the first thing I always ask myself is do I need to rewrite? And yes I do. So I'm going to write so this is a rewrite. I'm going to write y equals 
and this first term I'm going to rewrite as just x to the negative 3. If I have x cubed in the denominator, I can bring that x up to the numerator by making that exponent negative. Don't have anything to do on this second term. And the third term, now it's going to be tempting to rewrite that using exponent notation, but here, square root of 2, this is just a constant. So we don't really need to do anything with that. We're just going to carry it along. Now notice, when I did this step where I re did the rewrite, I did not do any derivatives. I just rewrote the function. Now I'm ready to actually do the derivative. When I have my function written as y equals, then I want you to use that differential notation for the derivative. It's going to look like dy dx. So this y here matches the name of the function, and the x matches the variable. OK, so let's just go term by term and do the derivative. So I'm going to have negative 3x to the negative 3 minus 1 minus 1.4x to the 1.4 minus 1 plus the derivative of this constant is just 0. So we end up with negative 3x to the negative 4 minus 1.4x to the 0 0.4. Now one really common error is when you have a negative exponent, it's tempting to increase the exponent by 1 instead of decreasing. So make sure that you, um, if you have negative 3, you're going to go to negative 4. If you had negative 2, der the derivative power is going to be negative 3. Now, we have another one here. We have f of x equals the cube root of x minus x squared minus 9 fourths over x, 9 fourths, 9 over 4x squared plus 9. So do I need to rewrite? Yes. So my rewrite is going to look like, so the cube root of x looks like x to the 1 -third. See how the, the denominator here matches the index here. I don't need to do anything to this x squared. This next term, I'm, I want to have this x squared separate from the coefficient part. So I'm going to write this 9 fourths separate from the x squared. And it's going to be x to the negative 2, actually, because I'm bringing that x squared up to the numerator. OK, so we've rewritten all of our terms. Now notice I did not do the derivative in any of these terms. I just did a rewrite, even if I didn't have to do anything to that particular term. The name of my derivative is going to be f prime of x. So we're going to just go through and use our power rule. So we have 1 third x to the 1 third minus 1 minus 2x to the 2 minus 1. This 9 fourths just goes along for the ride. And I have negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 1, and then plus 0. So I have 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds minus 2x. OK, here I can simplify a little. Um, first, I have a minus and a minus, so that's going to give me a plus. And then next, I can cancel a factor of 2. So I'm going to have 9 halves x to the negative 3. So my derivative looks like this. Now, in this one, it, the way it's written from the beginning looks a little different. We have this notation here, d dx. So that is what we call an operator, and it means take the derivative. So what this says is I'm supposed to take the derivative of what's inside here. OK, well, we can do that. 
So we're going to first ask ourselves, do we need to rewrite? And yes, we do. So I'm going to have equals. I'm not doing the derivative yet, so I'm going to keep that ddx notation. Here, I'm going to separate the coefficient from the x. So I have negative 2 fifths x to the 1 half plus x to the fourth. And with this one, I'm also separating that coefficient. So I have 1 third x to the negative 11. Okay, because I have this ddx notation, that means take the derivative. So this whole thing was a derivative right from the beginning, even if we haven't actually found it yet. So I don't have to worry about giving the derivative a special name because we've already named it. So we're just ready to do our actual derivative. We have negative 2 fifths. That goes along for the ride. Bring that 1 half exponent down in front. We're going to have x to the 1 half minus 1 plus 4x to the 4 minus 1 minus 1 third. Bring that negative 11 down. x to the negative 11 minus 1. Let's simplify a little here. 2's cancel, and I get negative 1 fifth x to the negative 1 half plus 4 x cubed. And then here, if I simplify a little, we have a negative and negative, so that makes a plus. And then I have 11 thirds x to the negative 12. So that's it for this video.